There are real challenges for registrars in the last part of the consultation, and this is particularly true in the context of the RCA exam. Registrars know that of the nine marks, usually four of them are on offer in this part of the consultation. Three for clinical management and an interpersonal mark for an explanation that makes sense to a patient and also for achieving a shared management plan. One of the dilemmas registrars face in terms of achieving a shared management plan is that decision around how many options do I share, how do I share them, so that a patient is clearly able to commit to the plan I'm offering. We're fortunate in the fact that uh, there is this guidance, uh, it's called uh, the Rule of Sixes and Sevens. Um, and basically what we know is that at seven minutes, most registrars are just embarking on their explanation. And as a consequence, they've got 180 seconds left in terms of the RCA uh, assessment uh, window. Flanagan talks about the fact you have to make an explanation that makes sense of the patient's symptoms, that makes sense of any uh, problems that that condition is causing them, intuitively makes sense of any investigations you wish to pursue, and of course makes sense of options that you wish to share. Even with rehearsal, this is going to take 40, 60 seconds, so you're now down to about two minutes. So Flanagan advocates the idea of leading with your first best option. And by that, what she meant was that of all the options that you could share, given the current evidence base and best practice, thinking about the person in front of you, their ideas, concerns, expectations, perhaps some of the constraints around home or work, which option is the most appropriate for them in terms of being feasible, uh, achievable, uh, as well as uh, uh, desirable. So you're going to lead with this first best option, okay, explaining it, but what you've actually got to do is talk about positives and negatives, that's called spinning the option. So in positives, it's often around the fact that it works quickly, uh, that it uh, may relieve symptoms, may cure the problem, may prevent relapse. In terms of negatives, it may be about the long delay before things start to improve. It may be, if it's a service, around a waiting list or some of uh, the constraints or the nature of the service. With regards to medication, it's usually around side effects. But having presented this uh, to the patient, and then you know, the question, how, what do you think of, uh, of that? If they clearly go, yes, they've bought into it, you're well on the way to a shared management plan. Obviously, if you're getting uh, verbal or non-verbal cues that this isn't really what they want, you just have to abandon it and move on to your next best option. Usually, however, Patients, if you've chosen well, will buy into that first best option and you've got about 60 seconds left. You want to get your review in if it's appropriate. You want to do any appropriate safety netting. And then with whatever time you've got left, you can talk to a patient about the things that they can do to help themselves. You might talk about informational resources, you know, the contents of them so patients can appreciate their relevance and value to them and uh, or therefore can agree to, as to whether this may be something of use to them, or you may be talking about what might happen next if things fail to improve. In terms of an approach, if you were embarking on your explanation at minute six, is you've got a bit more time in terms of helping achieve that uh, shared management. So Flanagan suggested that uh, you know, if you find yourself at minute six, you can actually explore their understanding around the diagnosis you've just given them. From what uh, you've just told me, I think you've got a condition called angina. 
What do you know about angina? The advantage, of course, is the patient presents their understanding. If there are any misconceptions, you're able to tailor your explanation to deal with those. Having done an explanation that makes sense of symptoms, any problems that the condition is causing, intuitively making sense of investigations and the options that you're going to present. What you can do, because you still have an extra 30 seconds in hand, is actually choose to present your first best two options and spin them. And then turn to the patient and actually say, of those two uh, ways that we might help, which do you feel would be the best way forward for you? Or of course, you may actually be suggesting, you know, of the two options, which may be the best way forward for you? Or do you feel that you might actually benefit from going with both of them? Now you're down again to about that one minute left, so it's the review, the safety netting if appropriate, followed by things they can do to help themselves, explaining the contents of informational resources or what happens next. So, in essence, your strategy for that last part of the consultation depends upon the point at which you think you're about to embark on the explanation. So, it's really important to have your clock or your stopwatch on your phone as you start the consultation that's been recorded for the RCA. Starting it at that point of that open question, how can I help you today? And when you are starting then to embark on your explanation, look at the clock. Is it minute, around minute six? Is it around minute seven? And address your strategy accordingly.